Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Quode, and welcome to the first episode of a new podcast series called Tac Talk. Uh, episode one is going to be talking about the foundation of not only FPS gaming as a whole, but also kind of give a little bit of backstory from both myself, Quode's perspective, as well as my guest, American Riot's perspective. Riot, what's happening, man? Yo! What's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, don't worry, I won't be screaming throughout the podcast. It's just, you know, a Habits. Yeah, right, you know, how, right. you know how it is. Yeah, let me break it down. Yeah, this is going to be a completely yeah, well, different format. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be it's it's going to be a long chat for those of you who are familiar with how podcasts work. We're not aiming to do like a 2-hour in-depth discussion, but it's just going to be two guys who happen to be uh, we play similar games, we like similar things, but we come from completely different uh gaming backgrounds. And so this is going to be kind of like an introduction to us. Um, so I'll, anybody that's watching this on my channel should know who I am. So I'll save out on like the long introduction. Um, I actually want to get started with you though, Riot. So I want you to kind of give me a little bit of foundation. Like who is American Riot? Like when did you come up with the name American Riot? Like who is American Riot, the personality? Oh, okay. Okay. And so American Riot, the personality is, is very much who I am in real life. Uh, only like on steroids, I guess you could say. So a very exaggerated um, persona of, of who I am, IRL. The name, I came up with American Riot because when I first started streaming in 2017, the very end of 2017 is when I started streaming. Uh, you know, I, I, I kicked a few ideas around. I had a couple ideas. And uh, I, I knew that from the research that I did that you had to have you had to have some type of vision, right? You had to have like whatever channel you want to do, whatever character you want to create. If you even wanted to create a character, right? Because there, there are folks who stream that they, they, I mean, they just stream. They, they don't, they don't have, to, they don't make characters. They just stream. They're who they are. I mean, it's just they just get on the camera. But I thought like whatever we do, uh, I want something that people can relate to, right? And then I, I want something that's very marketable and something that people can relate to. And I just want something that's like badass. You know what I mean? And so I kicked <laughs> the idea around, uh, and initially believe it or not initially the first the first concept i had for the channel was going to be uh like an old nickname of mine back in high school and then it was going to be like stories with so and so or whatever it was and the stream would be kind of like you know flipping through the pages of a book right so each each week or two would be a new chapter and that's what we would label the streams we label chapter one chapter two chapter three, and it would be like a story right okay uh and, and i had some kind of like some fun ideas for YouTube, you know, me sitting in like a recliner with a book, you know, smoking a pipe or whatever it was. You know? and, yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, so I had these ideas and I thought, you know, and I thought it would be kind of cool. And then I put it down on paper and I actually created some accounts too on Twitter or uh, on, on uh, Twitch and I had the name and stuff. And I, it, it, I just, I don't know, I guess I didn't feel right about it in my heart. And I said, you know what? And that's kind of when we went to the shift of like, no, I want, I want something that's just going to be in your face because like me, I've always like really loved heavy metal and I've always loved punk rock. And, and like in my, I swear, like in my other life, I would be, I would have been in a band, you know what I mean? Uh, but so a rock band specifically, and I thought, you know, I don't know, like, so let me think about it. Let me go back to the drawing board. So no joke. Uh, I was, I, I may or may not have been at work one day. Don't tell my employer. I may or may not have been at work one day, jotting down some names. Right. Uh, and just kind of brainstorming some ideas. I may or may not have taken it to my boss put it on her desk and said uh pick pick one you just said she, pick one yeah she looks at it <laughs> you know, my my boss is like what are <laughs> will you get back to work what are you doing in my office you know and uh she looks at it and she just points and she says because she glances at it for a minute and, and she's you know my boss super super smart um individual she kind of looks at it and she's thinking you know like the gears are turning in her head she looks at it and she points and she says this one. and i was like why that one and i didn't i hadn't even like looked yet and she said because it's badass and i was like okay and i glanced over and sure enough she pointed to american right and that's how it all started i and i gotta ask concept, I, I gotta yeah. ask before, I, I really hate to interrupt but i need to no, ask no, go ahead, go ahead, did yeah, she yeah. know what she was picking a name for yes she, she okay know. she had she an idea I was okay kicking around an idea yeah, yeah, yeah she knew i was kicking around this idea for twitch she didn't understand twitch um like her like the extent of her video game knowledge was like super mario and donkey kong 64 and some old school <laughs> okay. NES games because she you know plays old school nes you know 
and uh, she actually has one you know she like actually plays that Dope. so that was her extent but she never really got into gaming past that you know and so but she didn't really understand the concept she thought it was strange and she was like why would people watch you play video games and I, was like, I don't know I'm, <laughs> I'm asking i'm asking myself the same question i don't know if anybody will watch me play video games. exactly exactly yeah, like, I, I, like this is a leap of faith here you know and uh so what i thought is when she picked it i said well this is perfect because that was actually like in my top like that was in my top one or two choices and I was so glad she picked that. And it was kind of like, it, it just kind of reaffirmed to me like, okay, yeah, this is the name. And so the idea was that the American riot would, would be, he, he would live out the quintessential American dream, right? Like he would live out like, you know, the, the rags to riches gaming story. And it would be the most quintessential tale ever told. And, and so essentially just one dude from the backwoods, Appalachian Mountains, literally, literally no one knows him from Bob. You know what I mean? This dude- right has an idea, has a vision that he wants to be a gaming legend and really wants to get good at PC gaming and play games and entertain the world. That's like what he wanted to do. Uh, and he's going to live it out. Like he's going to live out the dream. And, and he is very much the embodiment of like the American spirit and rock and roll and heavy metal. And uh, if he can do it, anybody can do it. And and that is the, so in a nutshell uh, that like, that is, that is the American, right? I mean, it is literally, and I tell people all the time, like we are like legitimately living the American dream one viewer at a time. And that shit is no exaggeration. That shit is no lie. Like I mean, we were really out there doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm very just thankful uh, that, that my wife is so supportive of it, that my family has been so supportive of it. Uh, and that my friends have been so supportive of it. I, I think some of my friends, sometimes they, you know, they wish I maybe had more time to game with them <laughs> because we stream, you know, four nights a week. You of know? course. So yeah. I, I used to, I used to play video games with my buddies like every single night, you know? And so, you know, I, I understand that they uh, wish we had more time to game together, but uh, they're very supportive of it as well. So yeah, that's it. I mean, that's kind that's... of sorry for the, the long kind of spill there. Well, no, you covered you covered a, a couple of different things that I was going to ask. Like, I was even going to go more in depth if you didn't go like go there yourself. It's it's funny that you talked about the living the quintessential American dream because honestly, in today's day and age, I feel like that tale doesn't really get told that much. Um, ironically enough, by like. Um, like like you said like like an, like like you're just backwoods american like usually you hear about it somebody who's like either like immigrated from a different country like and so like you hear about their rags or riches like they they being you know the immigrants who had to come over through whatever adversity them achieving that american dream through their perseverance and then you also hear about the flip side you hear about people who may have started off with a lot and then lost it all and then had to regain it back you know what i mean but like you don't really get that tale of like true like well i didn't i wasn't really born from money i di wasn't really gifted money and you know i'm still finding success in my own way with my own flavor you know what i mean yeah, exactly. And, so, you know, and I was I was very inspired by those stories, though. You know, like the people who of course are, the people like uh, a friend of mine uh, in high school. Her family came over from eighty uh, from India, like literally had nothing. She said they came over. I think it was like the equivalent of like I was like fifty bucks U.S. or something, whatever it was. Wow. And, like now they own several hotels, you know, and and so, <laughs> I mean, like her. <laughs> her graduation present was like a Mercedes Benz, you know, like, <laughs> you know but, but whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, but that's progress, like, you know, but that, yeah, you know, but they were able to do that for their kids and, and like, they literally came over with nothing. And so that inspired me just be just cut, you know, coming up in, in like just a very like lower middle class, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. even there were even times of like, growing up that you know my parents like we got our electricity shut off we got our cell yep. phone turned off yep and my parents really loved us and they really you know they, they they were awesome parents and they always took care of my siblings and i um but we just hit hard times and that shit happens you know what i mean and so like i always remember that as a kid or if even I'm, being in high school this shit happened in high school too and like i just thought like i don't ever want that to happen to me and i want to give my kids a better life just like my parents like they came from you know really poor parents and so even us getting our electricity cut off and phone that was nothing compared to what they had to do with sometimes as kids you know what i mean and so you know i don't know i just kind of i no, i'm not gonna lie that actually resonates with me as well because like the i actually I, before i go before i continue with like my with my side kind of the development of the quote persona because like a lot of people always ask me like well where did quote come from and i'll get into that uh here in a sec but i gotta ask so if american riot the name the brand like only existed like you know circa 2017 did you what was your online alias before i'm just curious <clears throat> so <laughs> my online <laughs> i had i had several of them and uh when i was when i was in when I was let's see elementary middle school when I used to play SOCOM US Navy SEALs 2 greatest game of all time 
SOCOM 2 US Navy SEALs is how you would actually say it. But, uh, I used to be Assassin 0813. You know, okay. Super edgy. Well, super, and I, you know, I'm out there assassinating people, you know, whatever. Get the uh, kill. Then, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I'm like a 12 year old, you know, 13 year old kid playing up. I'm Assassin 0813. <laughs> Suck it, nerds. Uh, no, and so uh, that was my persona. And then prior to that, I mean, and before American Riot started, uh, I was the Bear Jew. <laughs> because, be, because uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino. Okay, I was about to I say love, this has I to be loved, a reference to Glorious Bastards. Bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love and I, I loved his character. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I just, I just thought it was, and and people thought I was Jewish growing up all the time. I don't <laughs> know why. It's like my nose. They said it was like my nose. It's the. My, it's got to be the nose. Just, yeah. I, yeah, and like, yeah, I just had this just like huge curly hair, just huge <laughs> hair, and, and like, I don't know. And like, I used to tell people all the time I wasn't Jewish. Like in high school, they said, "Are you Jewish?" No, bro, I'm not Jewish. Like, I don't know why. This, like, this is so funny. funny. Not, this is hilarious to me. Offended. You know, I was like, no, I'm not Jewish. Like, it mean, there's nothing wrong with being Jewish. I'm just right. not Jewish. You know? Right. Like, like, damn why do you guys keep thinking I'm... and so it got so bad people and then so then my buddies actually one of my buddies who i game with to this day he thought it would be funny because people kept asking me this he thought it'd be funny just to keep going ahead and, and, and spreading the rumor like so you know in, in the football locker room or whatever like, oh yeah do you know so, so you know he's actually jewish right I'm like, oh my god I, I i didn't know that you know what i mean you know and uh and it's, anyway and so it got so bad that's I amazing i just stopped i just People would ask, and I said, "Yeah, I am. I'm actually." <laughs> he just accepted it, and so yeah, that's how. Like, so tired of telling people a hundred times every week. <laughs> so I then, Jew Bear. So, yeah, Jew Bear, the Bear. It just all made sense, and so, and I just loved the character because right. he was such a badass. Like, yeah, you know, he was. was. Like, cracking Nazi skulls open with like a baseball bat, and 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 like and the nails. How metal is that? It's you know, pretty metal. So heavy metal. It's pretty yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's how. Yeah, uh, that was a persona, or that was my online alias. That's before, uh, wow. See, my the thing with Quode is that I've used the alias of Quode since before I was on the internet. So like the Quode is actually an alias that I created in a short story when I I was like probably 9 years old, 10 years old, and I I was writing short stories because at the time I read uh we're talking like grand fantasy for anybody who's listening to the podcast. Um if any of you are familiar with Raymond E. Feist or David Gimmel, I used to read the entirety of their collections, uh, even at that age, and they had a huge influence on my development and my uh, my philosophy and my approach to life, just from the characters that were in those books. But so Quode, I tried to integrate into short stories I would write for school because in English, English was probably my strongest um, my strongest class. Like English and history, those are my two strongest classes. And um, we had a we had a we had to do a group project where we had a co-author a short story with a, another student. And that's the first time that I can recall quote actually making it as a entity like quote. I wrote him as a character in a sci-fi universe. Like that's originally where he was. And specifically he was a clone from a previous version of himself. And there's a whole backstory with that. Okay. And, but the thing is though, so quote is the name I wanted a name that was short but unique because one thing I always noticed at the time was that people who had like really exotic names, they were usually super long and really hard to remember. Like this yeah, was yeah. this is back when I was reading about characters like um uh Pagarani or uh Susumini, like all these like long winded names or Kasharak or Kazarak and stuff like that. Like all these like really hard to pronounce names that, you know, it, it feels foreign. Like when you're when you're a teenager or a preteen actually, which is what I was, and you're reading these names, it, it doesn't resonate with you. Like, especially if you haven't been exposed yeah. to like any Eastern culture. So like the idea of having K and Z in a name just throws you off completely. You're like, What oh for sure what is yeah. this name? Um but so quote, but quote made sense to me because it's based primarily off of my first name, my real life first name, but, oh, okay, cool. but it shares elements with my last name. And so it's still me. It's like, it's like parts of my real self, but they're, they're altered and made into what I view as like a more attractive, um, persona, like a better ego, so to speak. Because as a kid, I had a lot of ego issues. Um, like I was very, like, in, I was very insecure. I was very, um, not, I wouldn't say 
anxious. Like I didn't suffer from anxiety, but I was very nervous about like being embarrassed. Like I got embarrassed okay. very easily, if that makes sense. And so no, no, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. And so like, but as I grew older, like, and I started getting online, and started playing um, like a browser-based game called RuneScape. For those of you who are familiar with that, um, RuneScape. Yeah, I'm familiar yeah. with it. I could, I could never get on the computer at the library. Thanks a lot, RuneScape. Yeah, RunEscape, RunEscape. Yeah, that's that's God. that's what it. That's what a lot of players ended up calling it <laughs> when we realized how addicted we were. But anyways, but and so that was actually the first time I used Quode online was on that game. And so, but just I just never dropped it like. Quote has always been that secure alter ego side of me. And as I've grown in real life as a person, Quote online has also changed a lot as well. Um, okay. And so the Lord, it's it's literally just a title. It's just meant to be a moniker. Like when I, like kind of like you, when I did a little bit of research in like what makes Twitch streamers successful and uh, mm-hmm. basically the starting aspects of branding. Um, one thing that I noticed was that very rarely did single syllable streamers make it. So like you always, you had submit 1g that's four syllables you had doctor disrespect that's five syllables you have choco taco which is four syllables again you have like i could literally go on and on and on like josh og that's three jericho or i i jericho that's like five right so you think about notable streamers like very rarely is there a single syllable the big obviously exception to this is shroud because Shroud, yeah. but Shroud is as a completely different beast in and of itself. He's an anomaly on a bunch of different levels. He is the exception to this general rule. And um, even Big Fry, Big Fry TV, that's four syllables. Um, there's American Riot, that's five syllables. And so Lord Quode, I needed something that could extend Quode from being a single syllable to at least two syllables. And so Lord was the only thing that really fit the kind of um, persona I wanted to portray. And that's why Lord Quode was created for Twitch. Oh, that's actually very interesting. Yeah, and it, 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 you know, it's so interesting too that you, people. I think that people that really are driven to be successful when it comes to whether it's Twitch streaming or they want to be YouTube or if if they're trying they're trying to be like I don't know an Instagram star or Twitter or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Or just generally too. I mean, you could look at you could take it out of the gaming and entertainment realm, but generally people that are driven they put a lot of thought and effort into it. And actually I did not know that. And I, I, that's actually really cool to put so much thought into it because I tell people that you obviously, you want to create something that, you know, that's, that's true to you, yes. you know, unless you just go way outside the realm, you know, and just completely be like some, you know, character, you know, whatever, that's just not you, but you want to create something that's true to you. And you want to create, you want to create something that, that people are willing like that are people that are willing to buy, you know what I mean? Like as far as even just a t-shirt, you know what I mean? Or even oh, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Uh, and then also you have to add value to your viewers, you know? And so just, just you thinking about putting the end and I never even thought this, you know, it's crazy. Maybe like subconsciously, I just thought American riot. That sounds good. That's, you know, Matt, you know, it's like, has this thing, but I didn't even think like syllables and, and, and what you're saying, because yeah. So you want to think of something uh it has to be yeah, something that's be, yeah. identifiable but like exactly. isn't isn't so complex that people are just turned off by it like i've come across people who um have a lot of numbers in their twitch name which at, if depending on like what what you're playing and what your twitch like thing is like what your what your twitch realm is it could work but like again like and I, actually i have a twitch a streamer friend of mine who actually did a complete rebrand because of the fact that his name was so unmarketable um, and I'll, I'll just say right here, uh, shout out to eight poo sniffer nine. So that's his name. Eight oh, poo sniffer mouthful, nine. Yeah. Okay. That's a mouthful. And like poo sniffer it, but here's what his channel is based around. His channel is actually based around, um, basically he calls himself, uh, he, he does what's called a BOC, which is like a bourbon night. So one night out of the week, he drinks a, like a name brand bottle of bourbon. And so, okay. so he's actually, it's actually more of like a classy kind of experience. Like, you know, he takes shots based off of donos and biddies and stuff like that. But most of the time he's playing like Rocket League or Battlefield. Okay. So like, but Pooh Sniffer is a very, that's, that's not a very marketable name. Like that doesn't resonate yeah, well, yeah. but his rebrand, his rebrand is Carl's Whiskey. That's his new oh, name. Okay. I and like that's that. actually clean. Like that's actually a clean, like persona because like it's a lot easier to get graphics for that it fits with the fact that he drinks bourbon and sometimes you don't get the brand correct on the first try but he's an example he's an example of somebody who's like like ever since he changed the brand name i've noticed that his average viewer count has like dramatically increased because it's just like you know what i mean like 
and well, think about yeah. oh sorry go ahead. no i was just gonna say because you think about uh, you think about how much the name alone impacts like somebody's first impression of you like poo sniffer is not really like I don't know, like you'd expect a, like a comedian, like a like a full blown comedian with like a bunch of slapstick humor and inappropriate jokes. But that's not really him. Like he's actually a chill dude who like yeah. loves to sip whiskey. Well, and I just even from the basic level, so you know, at least we you know put the put the thought into it beforehand, right? And uh, really came up with something that that we really loved and that was true to us and that was marketable. Um, but like just on a very basic level, like not even thinking about like being marketable. My thought was, and I noticed this just from watching Twitch probably for about a year before I decided to start streaming. Can you imagine trying to, if you were, if you were a big streamer and you were scrolling down, right? You're only going to get one shot to stand out and jump out at somebody. So that's why I put a lot of thought into just the titles of my streams, right? Um, Cause I've had guys just pop in and, and raid me because they're like, man, I just really like the title of stream. But even from a even more basic standpoint, just your friends that you meet as streamers, can you imagine trying to raid your buddy if their name was Poo Sniffer 8862 or whatever? I, I actually don't raid certain people because I have actually tried to raid them and I've had a typo on their name once or twice just because yep. of the way it's spelled. Yep. And I don't rate them. I don't rate them. And, and it's, I mean, they're my friends. Like, they're my buddies. So what I've gone to doing is pulling up their Twitch and then just copying and pasting the end of their Twitch, uh, yeah, you know, link. Exactly. But it's crazy because, like, if you just from a very basic standpoint, how easy is it to literally just backstash raid Lord Quote or Big Fry TV or American Riot? You know, it's just, it's easy and, it, and it's not crazy spelled. You know, it's not spelled crazy. And you just, it's easy. So I don't know. I just thought about it. Just even to break it down even more basic, like, you know, oh, I'm yeah. trying to host or raid somebody with a crazy name. It's not going to happen. Who it's, wants to do that? Yeah. From, from every aspect of it, it just doesn't make sense to, like, yes, you're unique if you have a weird name, but like, Unless you're offering something that's like so exclusive that really you're the only place people can come watch. And I'll go ahead and just throw this out there for an example. Like back in the early days, <clears throat> excuse me, fuck. So back in the early days, um, before before he grew a fan base uh, on on PUBG, uh, Choco Taco was a nobody. Like Choco Taco was a nobody um, because like you know that was before the Twitch explosion. That was you know that was like before there was like all these viewers watching these new games come out um and Chaco taco he didn't really i can't remember exactly what it was but the reason why his growth exploded was because he had a unique level of calm when playing PUBG. like a lot of PUBG streamers you know you had you had a lot of ragers you had a lot of people who were like would tell stories as they're running from zone to zone and they really weren't delivering like that high level gameplay. Like if you want high level gameplay, like you would either go watch Shroud or you would go watch Summit or you'd go watch um, uh, Dr. Disrespect, Grimms. Grimms, oh, guys, Grimms is an OG. Fucking Anthony, Anthony Khan. Yep, Anthony Khan. Like, and Chaco Taco, yep. uh, because he offered kind of that more calm lead back persona, actually very reminiscent of Shroud, but whereas mm -hmm. Shroud ha gives off like this very bored person like person like he always gives off this vibe like he's too good for what he's playing and so he does like to these be fair, things that may not be far from the truth i mean it's yeah it's really <laughs> not that far from the truth oh no, no, it's my but, uh, 36th kill this game yeah exactly but the thing is like you know choco taco was like on the other end of the spectrum like he was he wasn't like the nuttiest aimer but he was one of the smartest players like he had good yeah, aim, yeah. he had good reactions and he was like teaching people how to play spreezy is another PUBG streamer that comes to mind he's from i think oh yeah somewhere in europe somewhere in europe i don't remember exactly where and spreezy is actually a really um and he's another example like both those guys they have they had good foundation they had a great name they had good um uh a good brand already established and all they needed was just the time and that's one thing but and then, like i said if you're offering something that's unique and exclusive then people are going to come watch you regardless of your name you know um well yeah for sure you, you definitely want to that, that's the biggest takeaway i could always give people is just that um what what value do you add to your to your viewers if you can't think of what you add like if you can't think of the value that you add to your viewers then you you either are going to have to reassess the situation and come up with out value to add or you know just don't be a content creator or just do it for your friends and say yes. i don't give an f like I'm exactly just, I'm just, i and that's totally okay like i know people that's like dude i don't give a shit about 
you know, viewership or growing a channel. I just cast for my friend. I have a buddy like that. Actually, he's one of my mods, uh, Jamie the Foxy. Um, yeah. He's his he's like in a and actually like a world like uh, his one of his guild in World of Warcraft. They're like top in the world. They're one of the top guilds, and uh, he just casts for his buddies. Like he doesn't care if anybody watches him, and uh, he doesn't do it too often anymore. But he would just literally he would stream it, and then he'd save the vod and his folks like his his guild and his people that were in that raid. They would just go watch it. So like he didn't care about growing chains, you know he doesn't you know, but he would just do it, and so that's totally okay too. So I think those are like your three type like people that like really want to grow and really want to do something. People that just want to just stream for their buddies or or their guild or their clan, whatever it is. Uh, and then uh, other folks that that do it and uh, they just do it well. Actually, I think there's two types of folks. I think it's yeah. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, you have to feel you're either streaming, you're or, either streaming because you just yeah. want to game and you want to like share it and you don't really care who does it, but you're gonna be gaming anyway, so you stream. Or you're streaming because you want to grow, you want to build a community, you want to build a brand, you want to have some sort of influence because you have a following. Um, yeah, and exactly. that's well, I would say marketing perfect. So maybe the third yeah, type exactly. is just like when marketing. So the guys that, you know, these devs that have Twitch channels, like, you know, New World, when they stream, it's for marketing or PA purposes. So, Precisely. Yeah, so maybe that would be like the third kind of category. But yeah. Yeah. And so, and so going, and so going forward off of this, um, it's kind of funny that the, our brand building has been ironically not really in the same time frame. I mean, like you said end of 2017, right? So that's like beginning of 2018. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so we basically started around about the same time. It's kind of interesting how um, how both of us kind of... Because I spent a good solid, like, two months, like, coming up with the... Um, not only, like, the I, like a vision of what I wanted the channel to be, but also, like, obviously there's the, the visual image, right? So, like, for you, American Rights actually... I, I actually could I, I can see where you got the theme like before i even saw the channel name because like i always see the image first right the yeah, moment exactly. i saw the statue of liberty with the shades and the bandana and i saw that the channel name was american riot i was like okay this person gets what their name means and what they want people to associate with it right exactly and for my channel is a lot harder because it was meant you know because my channel is meant to be more of a like it was meant to be more of a for me thing like and because i wanted my, me to be such like a i wanted i wanted my brand to be a symbol rather than like an avatar it was mm. so hard and i mean it was so hard to like get this image like the image and the logo that everybody that everybody knows as the quote it mm. took at least a month and a half of back and forth between me and the artist before i got what i wanted because it's so hard for a non-artist to explain their image and their vision to an artist yeah and, well so man. how did you come up with that then so what is like i guess explain to us i mean does, does it the symbol? mean anything significant yeah yeah so, yeah, like, so this, explaining oh man dude the symbol man uh so the symbol is a it's a fleur-de-lis and it's a fleur-de-lis that is um kind of uh, how do i put this it's almost as if it's a fleur-de-lis made out of the a bird made out of a bird of royalty like there's a lot of different ways you can interpret the symbol and okay. the original concept was it was supposed to be a phoenix so it was su supposed to be specifically a phoenix that was coming out of or a part of the fleur-de-lis and the reason for that is well it's twofold um i've always found the fleur-de-lis to be a i've always associated that as a symbol of royalty and nobility and higher morals and just a better outlook and just having a higher purpose than just okay. like you know selfishness and the phoenix is kind of the has always been the representation of rebirth right the ability but specifically the ability to change so like there should always be progress like change and progress to me are things i've always embraced like if you look at my channel from when i first started to what it is now it's completely different like the format the 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 way that the stream camera is laid out like i didn't even have a green screen when i started i didn't even used to like do my hair i didn't have lights like you know there's all these elements of improvement that i've intentionally done for the channel and i've even changed my persona a little bit you know i've gone from being the <sighs> i've gone from being like this professor kind of person who's just always like perfect and always nice and everything to being more of this listen i'm the leader of the people of sandstorm like and it's it's an and it's an unofficial title but that's kind of like how i how i play it. that's how i view it 
and like I, I let the salt come out. Like I let the, the, the real emotions come out that way people understand like I'm human. Like, yes, you know, I, I have flaws and yes, I have passion, but I'm also nice. Like I ha- I have a good side. Like there's goodness there, you know. And the and the symbol well, I try to like encompass that. Maybe that's actually really cool that you say that because I mean no no matter what kind of walk of life you come from, right? Like way you know, whatever religion you believe in, uh, you know, uh, whatever higher power if if any at all, or um you know, whatever culture you come from, I think a lot of people can relate to that higher power or trying to be better than what you are, right? Or trying to exactly. achieve, like trying to be God-like, right? Like we all understand, you know, like you can't, you can't be God, right? But like God, like you just try to, or you look at it like trying to be, um, you know, like like a more pure person or whatever it is, right? And so I think that's kind of cool. People can relate to like trying to be better, like trying to be the best version of yourself. Exactly. Uh, because no matter where you come from, whether you're Christian or you, you know, Muslim or Buddhist or whatever it is, like I think every people can relate to like trying to be better, you know? Exactly. And, um, and who wouldn't want to be? And I think you can relate on that on a moral level, which is kind of neat when I think about you explaining yourself. You can relate to that on a moral level, but you can also relate to that in the games when it comes to your job or gaming. Yeah, the gaming work. Uh, I'm always trying to be better. Exactly. People do not watch my channel for for the Shroud or Choco Taco type play. You know, I'm telling you, people, people are not watching coming to the channel because we're making these insane plays. Now, occasionally, we do make those balling plays. But <laughs> they're gems. I, I, yeah, they, they are. Yeah, they are. They, they get clipped, all right? If not, you know, I'm out here telling you, I better clip that because this might be the only play you see like that tonight. But, uh, yeah, like, I always tell people, like, we're all about A, a plus, uh, you know, hype world class entertainment and that c minus gameplay so yeah so like we're all like people are always trying to get better so i'm always trying to better myself and as far as gaming or when it comes to like people that you know if you're raising a family or your job we can always try to strive to be better and so i think that's really cool that that yeah. your symbol embodies that you know and that's kind of and it's and it's not meant to be blatant right it's meant to be subtle because like you never want to come across as being well for me at least like i can never come across as overbearing or like because you you can come off being like very in your face like you talked about like being full metal like but it's <laughs> it's ironic that we come from different approaches because we're actually focused on the same thing which is improving like we're trying to progress we're trying to change we're trying to change ourselves we're trying to help our community we're trying to help build a community and change gamers like you know for the better it's in our own kind of style but it's still the same goal and i think the big picture is a lot more important than the unique path that we choose to take now that being said it's still great that we chose to take unique paths because like i said when people look at our streams and they have the multi twitch up it's a it's almost it's almost opposite like you would never be able to tell that a riot and lord quote frequently play together and like yeah. actually vibe together but yeah yeah for sure for it's sure. a thing of opposites attract like yep. there has to be you know we're opposites in execution but we have similarities in terms of vision and that's yeah, yeah, exactly. why there's alignment exactly yeah and 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 what's cool is you you have that and then it, and it, I, it almost kind of represents a community too. So we play a lot of the same games. So recently, you know, we play a yeah. lot of Insurgency. Recently, we've gotten into Zero Survival, and so those are two separate, you know, t- a tactical shooter, more, you know, uh, you know, and uh, Insurgency is more fast paced. Zero is just kind of a survival game, right? Or if we played Squad, you know, right. that, I would say that's very ta- that was more so tactical than Insurgency. But uh, Insurgency has these tactical aspects of the time to kill and just the the way the gunplay is and just you know move you know some of the movement stuff. But like and Zero is totally separate. But it's cool because it represents communities of games. Like we can be totally separate personalities, but we come together. We vibe really well, especially being on the same team. So we vibe together as a team, but we could come together and, and enjoy a, a common uh, experience, which is the game, right? Whether it's you know exactly. going into a city and getting into some PvP and getting some cool loot in Zura and trying to make it back to the safe zone, or if it's going those you know getting those three and O's on on Sandstorm. Or playing the objective and actually tapping a couple points in uh, in squad and not taking a single death, you know. Like so, I think it's kind of cool. It represents the community because just just like a melting pot, like these games are melting pot. It doesn't just draw one type of person. You Correct. Know what I mean, so and I, it's so I don't know. There's a lot of parallels, I think. Yeah, and it's and it's one of the greatest aspects of gaming, and it's kind of why it's kind of why like the more content that is that is that you know gets out there to the world i think the better because there's a lot of people who you know they don't get the opportunity to even play video games you know and i think yeah. that being able to share that experience like 
not even of just the game, but the experiences within the game. It, like you always hear people talk about, it's the game within the game that matters. Like like when you're talking about Rust, right? And like yeah. anybody who understands Rust, like it is a game within a game. Like there there are elements like layered within it. It's not just a looter. Like it's a clanning experience. It's a it's a tactical war. Like there's a it's a whole different reality within that Rust universe. And um, mm. it's why so many people still play it to this day. Yeah, and, uh, I think on it was, it was pulling like thirty-one thousand viewers yesterday. Last yeah. night when I looked on on average concurrent players. So yeah. yeah, they're they're in the twenty, thirty, forty <laughs> thousands every night. That's and that is very impressive. I I honestly did not realize yeah. how big of a deal Rust oh, is. It's a like, huge I, deal still. Yeah. And like, you know, we can go on and on about it, but you know, the fact of the matter is, um, as you know, as long as there's games that keep coming out. You know, we'll be kind of taking a look at it, and we'll continue to try and uh, bring coverage on the games that not only we enjoy, but we think our our fans and communities will enjoy. So, um, yeah, for sure. It, well, and that's another thing too. Like when you kind of go back to your channel and marketing, like not only is it about that, but knowing your audience. I think a lot of people don't know their audience, and that gets well, people in trouble. It's hard when you don't have one, right? Like you know, you have well, to that's true too. you have to yeah, preemptively yeah, shape it, too. and that's something that that's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration because there are quote unquote undesirables that you'll get as viewers, and I hate to use that word, but when I'm talking about like you know. There's a huge difference between a viewer that comes in because they have like a slight interest in the game that you're playing and they just want to see if you're offering anything different than what other people are. But more than likely, if that person comes in for that short amount of time, they're only in it to just make sure that the game is running consistently across different streamers. I know a lot of people who go on Twitch, you hop from streamer to streamer to see what their experiences are in each game. And so like very rarely will you actually get a first time viewer that's immediately looking for another channel to watch like you exactly. as a streamer need to be on your game whatever it is you're going for you need to be on your game all the time that way when people come through they their interest is immediately peaked if if you have the kind of traits they're looking for they're immediately peaked and so they stay longer and the longer they stay the more interested and the more invested they get that's how you retain like long-term viewers like you have to be the real you all the time even when there's nobody watching because exactly, yeah. you know I'm, i mean i'm not gonna lie i don't i don't think a lot of teenagers like watching my stream i'm just gonna be honest like i feel like a lot of the teenagers and the younger adults like you know in their 20s i don't think they like watching me because i'm i'm very chill i'm like non-committal unless you know it's a different kind of day and i'm really hyped for some reason but mm -hmm. and i'm okay with that you know and you just i think that's something that a lot of new streamers struggle with yeah, or or when people want to do variety, like variety streaming is, is is great, and and don't get me wrong, I think you can be a very successful variety streamer. You, shit, you can do anything you want, you know, if you put your mind to it and you're willing to work for it, uh, and you execute, you know, if you can execute on good ideas and stuff and learn from bad ideas, but uh, it's it's just tough when you're a variety streamer or when people are kind of like in a funk, like they're not really sure what they want to do, and so you know, you kind of. If you're bouncing around, if you mostly play tactical shooters and then you jump into, uh, you know, Japanese MMO or whatever it is, right? Like, or yeah. you jump uh, to a side scrolling adventure game. Well, and, and you wonder, like, well, why am I only got five viewers tonight? Well, it's it's because your 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 audience you primarily build up. You know, they want to watch tactical shooter or some type of shooter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if you're a battle royale player and, and then you go to go play a single player game, uh, like a horror game, like maybe like Resident Evil. Um, yeah, I, like, I, you know, it's just you to know. And that's one thing, too. And that's one thing that I kind of struggled with. Um, just not, not necessarily struggling with, but I started out playing Battle Royales. Then I started out, like, kind of being variety and playing horror games and playing adventure. Like, I try to mix it up, but I was just trying to find my way, you know. And I've always loved tactical shooters. I've always, always loved third-person shooters. And, I, and I've always loved permadeath. Like, I, there's something very, um, just to me, that's just, draws me to that permadeath it just that one life means so much and there's so much pressure on it uh it, you know so that's when i really uh about six months ago seven months ago i really found like man i you know this is what i'm very passionate about and i think there there's definitely a gap and there's definitely something to be filled for these type of games you know what i mean because oh, yeah. i don't think there's enough people that do them and i just love it and i have such a passion for it and so yeah i just i don't know so just kind of thinking about 
that. You know, so I digress, but yeah, no, it's all good. I mean, that's what we're doing. Is we're doing this so we can allow the tangents to kind of fulfill themselves. Um, I had wanted to kind of go in depth explaining kind of like our progress about you know as personal gamers and how that's translated into like our stream life. But I feel like this actually has been a really good. Um, I think we've covered a lot of content yeah, in the wow. backstory actually, already. How's like, how's like the 40 minutes? It's already, yeah. it's already gone. This it's is already nasty. gone. So yeah. uh, I think we'll actually call this as a wrap uh, for the for first sure, episode. Sure. And then uh, we'll probably reconvene, may- maybe not next week, but the week after we can probably reconvene. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah. For those of you who are listening right now, uh, we record this ahead of time and kind of give us a little bit of breathing room and then we drop it. Um, so around the time this first episode drops, we may or may not uh, be in the process of recording the second episode of this podcast. I do want to thank everybody for coming by and giving it a listen. Uh, it's a long listen. If you guys have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in our next video, uh, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. And from Lord Quode and American Riot, this has been uh, Tac Talk, episode one. Thanks, guys. Yow! <laughs>